In this video, we're continuing our northeastern United States road trip. We're driving, right now, we're driving out of Smoky Mountain National Park in Tennessee, and we're heading south, back down into North Carolina. We're gonna be staying in western North Carolina, and we're gonna be doing some more of those waterfall hiking trails you all seem to like so much. Uh, we're staying at a great campground that we're gonna show you. We've never been there before, but we hear good things. And uh, we're gonna spend a couple days. So we hope you enjoy the video. Rose, you got anything to say? Got anything to add? Well, she's a woman of few words as usual. All right. Hey there, I'm Rose. And I'm Dan. And, and we, we are, are the Half-Ass Half Travelers. Travelers. Good morning, Hamfasters. Well, we got a little rained on last night when we got to the campground. A lot rained on. A lot rained on. It seems like the weather's following us, but we're optimistic because the weather's pretty decent this morning. I think it's supposed to rain again this afternoon, but we have time. So we're gonna go out and we are going to uh, do the waterfall tour. There are so many waterfalls in this area of North Carolina and, and short hikes to those waterfalls. And there's also white waterfalls, which is where we're going to first, and that is the tallest fall east of the Rockies. And it's about a mile hike, um, so we'll get our warm up in. And then there's some other falls we're gonna do after that. And then there's a, another place in the town of Cashiers, I think it's called, that we have to go see. So we have a full agenda for today. We're gonna take you with us and we're on our way. Rose, you awake? Yep. 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 Okay. Well said, Rose. Let's get going. Well, there's not a big crowd at Whitewater Falls today, probably because the weather was so bad last night and it looked a little bad this morning, but it cleared up. Either that or it's just not that crowded a place during the week. But when you come here, it is a part of the National Park uh, System and there is a self-service pay like a lot of these national parks have when there's no visitor center and no gate. Uh, it's only $3 per vehicle and you just basically uh, put the three dollars in an envelope and you put a stub on your windshield however since we have the america the beautiful pass uh we're covered we just put the pass up on the windshield now looking at the hike here rose look how excited she looks yeah it appears that this is not going to be so much a hike as more of a just a path for a half mile up to the waterfall so we're not going to bring any of the hiking gear i don't think we're even going to bring water it's nice and cool and i think we're going to be just fine um yeah, so you're ready. She's ready. The 
that seemed like a shorter walk than a half mile. It was just right up the hill. And wow, just wow. It's gorgeous. Uh, it's a very short path, very easily doable, very accessible, and very gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous, see what I did there? Gorgeous. There's also a little foothills path that starts right here. It goes about a tenth of a mile. It uh, looks like stairs going down. We're going to check that out just to see if there's any different views of the falls. But we're impressed so far. The only bad thing is we can't get right down to them. Uh, that would be nice. Yeah. There's really no way. Yeah, it was definitely worth the extra. I don't know how many steps. Maybe we'll count them on the way up. Uh, it was easy coming down. We'll, we'll uh, get back with you when we're at the top. But wow, I mean, this is the spot to be. This this portion obviously is not accessible, but but uh, you definitely want to come down here if you can. Getting pools down there. Yeah, we. This is amazing. What an amazing waterfall. This is the largest waterfall we've seen I on the trip, so. and which makes sense because we haven't gone west of the Rockies. Yeah. Okay. There is a foothills path that continues on down, but the path uh, it says right at the top that there are no uh, waterfall views on that path. So we're not going to take that one. Uh, we're going to head back up and count the steps. It's a good thing we're in shape. <sighs> Wasn't that bad. It was 154 steps. Come on, we've done that many times. Yeah. We just did it all at once. Yeah. Rose wanted to run up. Yeah. Yeah, right. Just to, <laughs> so it wouldn't last so long. All right, back to the car. One last look, one last look. That was a nice little, I wouldn't call it a hike. I'd say it's a nice little viewpoint with the waterfall. Yeah. Only about a half hour mm -hmm. and you can definitely fit this in with other hikes and trails as we're doing today. So, we're on to the next one. Where are we going next? I have no idea. Some kind of iron bridge we hear. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Let's see. We'll figure, we'll find out. All right. Actually, we'll find out when you find out. Or vice versa. One of them. This is a good example of the <laughs> difference between expectation and reality. It was marked as an iron bridge on the map, this big iron bridge. Well, there it is. This is the Chattooga River, not to be not to be confused with the Chattanooga River. And tell about the drive over here, hon. Oh, we went through hill and dale and gravel and all kinds of neat stuff. And yeah, we lost the paved road a couple that, miles back. <laughs> yeah. But at least it was gravel, right? Yeah, we were kind of lost, but actually not because here it is. Yeah, we found it. Let's go check out the view. What do you think? Actually not bad. <laughs> really not bad. <laughs> Look at this, there's a whole waterfall here. That's pretty oh. cool. Just past the Iron Bridge, we found a little parking area and there's a little trailhead here. We're not really sure what's down here. Uh, we see this cave 
which is pretty cool. And then we found this placard constructed by the Youth Conservation Corps in 1977. So we're gonna check this trail out a little bit. We have no idea what's down here, but it is heading down to the river. So maybe there's another waterfall rose? I don't know. It's a, it's a very wet trail. This is yet another example of the kind of thing that you can find when you just pull off on the road and take a random trail because this is a nice trail right around right along the uh, Chattooga River. This is beautiful. We didn't even yeah. have to hike that far. It was maybe what? An eighth of a mile, not even. I don't know. But it's a little muddy and we're we didn't bring our sticks or anything and it looks like it gets a little steeper up ahead. So we're gonna turn around and head back. Yeah, we, but this, this was is great. Beautiful. We, we decided to go a little further. Thank God we did. We found a sandy beach now. Look at this, Rose. <laughs> Looks like people have been doing rock stacking or something. I don't know. Oh, they've been building sand castles. Aww. This one's the most recent. Yeah. Pretty cool. Look at this view, though. Wow. All the way up the river. This is a nice swimming hole. Rose is going in the water. Rose is going in the water. Yes, it was I am. Too inviting for you to resist, right? Right. Here I go. Ooh, it's cold. <laughs> Not every waterfall in the area is a long hike to get to. And Bridal Veil Falls is a perfect example of a roadside waterfall. But this one's a little different because you, we can actually walk under this one. This one's cool. In fact, take a look, it's right there. <laughs> Rose, it looks like this one you should be able to drive under. That's pretty cool. All right, we're getting the other perspective here. I don't know if you can even see it on this video. Oh, wow. <laughs> I thought huh? you just did. What? I thought we just did. Uh, I didn't go in there. It doesn't go far. What do you think of Bridal Veil Falls, hon? It was pretty cute. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it was worth the hike. It was different. Definitely <laughs> worth the. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. The next fall is Dry Falls, and it's called that because you can walk behind it and supposedly stay dry. But from what people are telling us, you're going to get wet back there. So another one of those falls you can walk behind. So. We're excited, let's go. Uh -huh. This has got to be one of the most fun waterfalls we've yeah. ever been to. That is a lot of water <laughs> we're running under. And yeah, no, it is not. It says dry falls. No, no way. way. <laughs> no way. Yeah. You don't want to stand under there too long. Otherwise, you will be completely Drenched. soaked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if we it keep going down. Awesome. Yeah, it is. If we keep going down the canyon a little bit, we can uh, get some better views or some other views. So let's take a look.
was a lot of fun. You gotta yell because these falls are very loud. Oh, my, my New Yorker was coming out there, those falls. The falls were loud. <laughs> now we're gonna head back up top. We got at least one more waterfall to see before it's lunchtime. I don't think it's gonna stop this one. Uh, it's pretty good, this is pretty good. It wouldn't be a waterfall trip unless we came across one that we couldn't pronounce. So I think it's Kalasaja, Kalasaja, something like that falls. It's off the roadside. We're not getting a very good view from here. We're gonna see if there's a, a place up a little further ahead that we can get a better view. There's not many places where you can get really close to this one. If we had decided that we wanted to risk hiking on one of these unmarked trails, we probably could have gone down and gotten some better video, but it's really not worth the risk. Uh, it's a little muddy and wet. It rained last night. So we're going to move on to the next one. Well, here's a nice tree. We weren't expecting to find this one. This one's not even marked on the map, but apparently there's a rope set up and they've got a little bit of a slide action going on this one. And there's butterflies. And there's lots of butterflies. Yeah, it's a double whammy. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on though, right? Okay. We're treading into unfamiliar territory now. We drove over to Glen Falls and we're not really sure how far this hike is. We saw a couple of folks that were leaving and they said that there was probably two overlooks, two or three overlooks, and then you could hike down to the bottom. Uh, they didn't really know how far it was, a mile, whatever. Uh, we're gonna go as far as we feel like going. Uh, we're not really sure of the trail conditions. We don't have our bags or anything. I don't think we're gonna need them, but we'll check it out. Rose, what do we got? Whoa. Holy cow. Holy Moses. That goes down quite a ways. Yeah. So we must be at the top of the large falls. We need to go down one more. Got it. Huh? <laughs> we can do it. What do you think, Rose? Worth the hike? Yeah, really cool. Let me see if I can get up here. I'll help you. So what'd you guys think of that waterfall? It's incredible, right? Yeah. That was, that's as far as we're gonna go. I, you can go a little further down. We were told that the next overlook looked similar to the overlook we were just at. And we had an opportunity to go down and scramble a little and get some really good Vids. video and pics uh -huh. of the fall itself. Now we're going to try to make our way back up. <laughs> we didn't bring any gear with us. And no water. Might have been a mistake. All right, we'll let you know what kind of shape we're in when we get back to the Jeep. <laughs> if we get back to the Jeep. If we had to do that again, 
I would say we would bring our hiking poles just to make those steps a little easier on the way up and the way down. There was a few muddy spots and uh, it was a little steep at times, but not bad. I call it out a moderate to strenuous hike. Would you say that, hon? Moderate to yes. strenuous? Yes. yes. Okay, so I think that's gonna be our last hike for the day. And now we're gonna go get some food. Well, good morning to you. Good and morning. you, Rose. Good Rose, morning. you actually said good morning? Rose is talking. She must have had her second cup of coffee already. Did you? No. Oh, wow. But I do amazing. have my Red Bull ready. <laughs> yeah. Well, last we saw you, we were uh, getting ready to head to lunch yesterday. Uh, we didn't do much else yesterday. We, we had lunch at this little ski slope kind of grill. It was really good. Um, because the brewery we wanted to go to was closed on Wednesdays. Of course. And yesterday happened to be Wednesday, of course it was. That's the kind of thing that happens to us all the time. No big deal. But when we got back to the campground, they had set up a potluck dinner. They do it every Wednesday night. And so we went over there and they have this nice setup with the grills. You can use the grills at this campground anytime you want. You don't even need to break out your own grill. You can just go over there and grill it. Uh, there's a yeah. nice like bar kind of food bar area. There's also a seating area with a fireplace and uh, a table, picnic table area that's all covered. And it's really nice. There was a lot of people there. And there are people that come there every Wednesday that live in the area because they're all like a very close knit group. And that's one of the things we like a lot about this campground is it's it seems like a very close-knit group of people and they're all so friendly and the owners just couldn't be nicer uh adam and melissa yep uh are the best we've we've, we've never had this level of service from owners of an rv park have we ever run no hunt? no I, I mean they, they are just they are just great um apparently there was some you know issues with the previous ownership and they, I, I think they're trying to alleviate those concerns well they have because they've done a great job it couldn't have been better so what are we doing today we are on our way out to do two more hikes not really hikes um we're, we're kind of getting hiked out a little bit we're a little bit tired and this afternoon i have to get some work done so we're going to keep it a little tame today we're going to go see some more waterfalls you know we love the waterfalls and the reason you're seeing all these waterfall trails is because trails are great but it's just something about having that nice object at the end of the path that helps you go on like with chimney tops in Tennessee, you know, just seeing the top of the chimneys and all that. It's something that helps you carry on when these, when you're on, especially when you're on the difficult trails, right on? Right. I mean, it's, you gotta have something. So that's why we like these waterfall trails and we hope you do too. Plus waterfalls are great. They're awesome, they're so peaceful. You could, we could just sit there for hours watching the water coming down. There's something about the chaos in the order. Does that make sense? It's like the chaos of the water, but it's in it when it reaches the waterfall, it's completely orderly uh, until it hits the bottom, then it gets chaotic again. Uh, I, that may be just me talking from somewhere else, but I, I don't know. That's just the way I see it. All right, so we're on our way. All right, so our first waterfall of the day is Looking Glass Falls right behind us. As you can see, it's right off the side of the road. There are some steps to go down, but that's it. It's, there's no distance hike. Uh, no need to bring any of your gear. <laughs> she says that now, but wait till she's got to come up the steps. Uh, Looking Glass Falls got its name because I guess when it freezes, the stone is very reflective behind uh, the waterfall. So. Uh, that's how it got its name. But we're going to go down. We're going to take some pictures from up here, and then we're going to go down to the bottom. Uh, I see people down there swimming in the pool. It's like mid-60s here, and that water's got to be cold. So maybe they're from Alaska or something. I don't know. <laughs> Polar Bear Club. Yeah, North Carolina Polar Bear Club. Could be. All right, let's go down.
How about that for a waterfall, Rose? Oh, it's pretty nice. Yeah, this is awesome. There's a wind coming off here with mist and it is freezing. I don't know how anybody is swimming down here, <laughs> but that waterfall is gorgeous. We're gonna take some pictures. We're gonna sit here and we're just gonna watch it. It's so nice. This is an incredibly easy waterfall to experience. Not a lot of steps. A little out of breath, but not bad. Not like we were yesterday at Glen Falls. But yeah, this is really easy. Yeah. I think we might add a waterfall. We're gonna go about three miles up the road. Is Sliding Rock. We're gonna go take a look, see if we can get in there. Yeah, let's go. All right. I think I said Slippery Rock Trail or Slippery Rock Falls. This is Sliding Rock Falls. And it's a very popular place. There's a, a small, a very, uh, like five dollar admission fee per person to come into this area because it's a very popular place for people to come and enjoy sliding down the rock and into the pool and swim and it's it's and it's going to be a hot day today so it's probably going to be very crowded so we're going to go down there and just take some video we're not going to swim today no but we're going to go take some video and show you what it's all about So as you can see, the kids are having a great time and, and the adults as well. Uh, we, you know, we had seen uh, Sliding Rock uh, online. We had seen some videos on YouTube. And I'll be honest, I thought it was gonna be bigger. bigger. I thought it was gonna be a bigger slide. It's really, it, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty long slide. I don't know why we just thought it was gonna be this huge, this huge thing, but. It's early yet, that's why there's no line. Usually there's a line of people waiting to go up on the rock, and, and at least in all the videos we've seen. And you can see there's more, there, there's, there's more people and coming. And they do have lifeguards here. Yeah, yep, there are lifeguards. But yeah, and there's a nice pool at the bottom, and there's some other little <laughs> swimming areas and creeks and, and whatnot. So it's a really nice, if you have kids, uh, you definitely want to give this place a visit, definitely. All right, Rose is gonna get her, her photos. One more thing that well, we didn't mention because we didn't even know until we went over and looked at the sign, but there's apparently three tracks here. If you go far on camera left, that's the slow track. Right down the middle is where, where this girl's going right now is the medium. And then if you come over to the other side, that's take, the fast track. And you take some bumps and hits on that I was going to say, I don't think I'd yeah, try no. that with my back. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No way. But they look like they're having such a great time. <laughs> You ready, you ready to go in there, hon? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. I, I sense a little sarcasm in her voice. <laughs> Let's go. Well, this was a real treat because we weren't planning on coming to Sliding Rock today, but it, it is only a few miles up, to, up the road from Looking Glass. So if you're going to go to Looking Glass, at least come by and take a look at Sliding Rock. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. But we're not swimming today. No. We're gonna we're moving on now. We're gonna we're going back down into the town of Brevard. We're gonna go look for some white squirrels. Yeah, we they have a white squirrel festival in Brevard, and we heard that there's a lot of white squirrels in the area. We've never seen a white squirrel. No. So now we're on the hunt for the elusive white squirrel. squirrel. We failed miserably in Brevard at finding a white squirrel. However, as we're driving to the next waterfall, we happened upon a white deer. Now I uh, haven't seen a white deer before. Uh, this one's in captivity uh, on a some kind of farm. Uh, there's also, looks like a reindeer or an elk with some reindeer-like uh, antlers. But yeah, this was a nice little find. Uh, Rose is really happy. She's getting some good video and we'll post that over top. Yeah, she's so happy.
This is Living Waters Fall. It's kind of, it's a beautiful fall, but it's kind of in this, it's behind this uh, church mission. Uh, it's all private property, uh, but the folks at our campsite said that they don't mind people coming in and, and uh, getting to the trail this way. Uh, we are apprehensive about any time we see private property signs, uh, but we want to come down and take a look. We're going to see uh, if we can find anybody over here that can give us some direction. We're the only ones here, so uh, uh, we'll let you know. We really don't, or we don't know what to think of this place. It's really nice. Uh, this looks like somebody's house, but I don't think it is. I think it's all part of this. Um, it, we're going to... Uh, not risk doing something illegal. Uh, the folks at the campground told us that they post no, the no trespassing signs because they don't want a liability if anybody gets hurt on the trail or whatever, and we understand that. Uh, again, we're apprehensive about it. Um, so we're gonna move on. Yeah. All right. All right, change of plans one more time. As we were getting ready to pull away from the site, uh, the a couple of folks who are affiliated with the the retreat here um, told us that uh, the reason that they stopped allowing the public to use it is just because that bridge we just walked over uh, they were having problems with it because they had a, a flooding incident and they thought it might have damaged it so they didn't want to take any chances uh, but he gave us the green light he said no you should be you should be fine kind of directed us where to go so we're gonna go down and take a look and see what there is on this trail Rose, wait till you see this. Just a cliff face. We have never seen anything like this. This is so cool. When we rounded that corner, uh, it was, I'm so glad that we decided to come down here. This is gorgeous. This is probably the, the most gorgeous scene we've seen so this far. entire trip. Yeah. I mean, just that massive cliff behind us and then all down here. And you can see there's people down here that are using the swimming hole. Really beautiful. Wow, don't miss this. Don't miss this height. Beautiful. One of the really cool things we see here is that the water has cut these holes into the rocks everywhere. And it's gotta be from the water just spiraling around when the water level changes to higher and lower. But those little holes are everywhere. The bad side is you gotta watch where you're stepping.
just so you know, you do not have to park on the private property of the, the, the church retreat. You can park out here on the street, right by the living water sign. And then to get to the trailhead, there's a couple of ways. You can go down the road a ways, and then there's a way down there. Also, you can look for this red chalet, and there's a path that goes right along the side of the building. And then you just follow that down to the first waterfall. And then after that, once you, once you uh, get to the first waterfall, or the view of the waterfall, then you can just keep going along, follow the trail along the water, and you'll come to all the other waterfalls, and then eventually the canyon. I believe the trail extends past the canyon, but we, didn't, we decided not to do all that. We're getting a little hungry. It's about lunchtime, so we're getting ready to go eat some lunch. Once again, if we find anything interesting, we will let you know. Good morning, half-asters. Possibly for the last time on this trip, right, Rose? Yep. We left the campsite this morning uh, just outside of Tuxani. Is that the name of yeah. Lake? Lake Toxaway. Toxaway. Lake Toxaway. I, I, I don't, for some reason, I have a mental block. I can't pronounce that. Uh, but we are the route home or the route back south has taken us back through Brevard. So we have spent the last 15 minutes looking for white squirrels again. The elusive white squirrels. Yeah, because of the failed mission yesterday. And guess what? <laughs> it's another failed mission. At least we saw the white deer, right? Oh, well, yep. That was yeah. really cool. Yeah. Uh, so we're heading back to stay with family in South Carolina, and then we're going to be visiting family in Florida, and then we're heading back. So this is probably going to be the last video of this uh, trip. Um, don't think we're going to shoot anything else, unless we see something particularly interesting along the way. Uh, Tons of geese. Oh, my God. Okay, geese. Well, it's like go. squirrel, squirrel. We hope you enjoyed this series. Uh, we weren't sure, you know, how uh, you guys were gonna like our traveling videos. Uh, mostly what we've been doing this whole year was uh, uh, RV review videos. So, but we hope you enjoyed them. We hope you enjoyed traveling with us. And we hope we didn't we made it a little bit interesting and didn't bore you or anything like that. Uh, if you liked it, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. It really helps support our channel. Uh, don't forget to ring that bell for notifications so you'll be told every time we post a new video. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I think our next video going out is going to be a uh, after, I think, two month review of the Wayfarer and everything we discovered on this trip. We have an entire laundry list of stuff that we did not know before we started this trip that you are going to need to know if you're going to get a Wayfarer or even any uh, small Class C. So stay tuned for that video. Rose, you have anything to say? Come on, give me something. How about a donkey kick? Ee -aw. Ee -aw, ee -aw. All right, we'll see you in the next video.